Michelle Midnight. Welcome to the <laughs> Uniweb Interview Show. What's up, Michelle? Hi, Matt. How are you today? <sighs> I'm feeling I'm I'm feeling pretty low energy, honestly. <laughs> Really? Are you tired? Not my normal self. Hmm. Are you are you out in some wooded glen? Beautiful um, out there. Thanks. I'm out of park near my high school right now. Near your high school. You still are you still are in high school. Um and you just had a birthday, correct? Yes. I turned yeah. eighteen about two weeks ago. Happy birthday. Um Michelle, I'm excited to talk to you. Uh when uh, I was setting this up, I, I just looked into kind of what you're doing and, you know, being, you know, you're still in school and talking a little bit about this before, but you're still in school and you're an author. You've written a book, right? And you're, you're working on getting it published now, um, but you're also a computer programmer. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you do more, you already do more than me at the age of 18 than I've ever <laughs> done in my entire life. <laughs> amazing <laughs> thank you it's amazing so tell me about the book what's the name of the book you've written michelle um it's it's called society's trial society's trial yes awesome so what is that about um about 16 year old jason woods um after an accident he gets rushed to the hospital and so they do an mri scan on his brain and apparently what this accident caused was um, certain areas of his brain will randomly shut off and turn back on. And these areas, when they turn off, it'll cause impulsivity, empathy loss, and poor judgment. Which means if he has a very violent thought, nothing can stop him from acting upon that thought. So for a normal person, if you have a violent thought, you're going to think, oh no, this is bad, I can't do this. But for Jace, when these areas shut off, um, yeah. his brain can tell him that. So he actually acts upon this thought, and this is what happens. So he ends up becoming a serial killer known as Jace the Slicer. And <laughs> there's this oh group God. of <laughs> and there's this group of detectives called Team Foxshot. So they try to solve the case to catch Jace the Slice, Jace the Slicer. Wow, that sounds really interesting. It it reminds me <laughs> having parts of your brain being shut off. That sounds like you know most people's Friday and Saturday nights. Um, <laughs> not, hopefully none of them are turning into serial killers because of it, but where did, where, so where did the idea for, uh, for this come from? Jason Slicer. Um, nothing really in particular. I just wanted to write about a serial killer. And at this time, I was like 14 when I wrote it. And so I was really interested in psychology at that time. Okay. So I did a lot of research about the brain. So, like, uh, have you watched Dexter? Um, I've seen the first episode. You would love that show. I, I assume <laughs> it's about. Yeah, I actually about a do love it. What? So, what was it that made you excited about serial killers? That's interesting to me because <laughs> it's interesting when people have interests such as that. I'm not sure. I mean. My interest sparked in middle school, and I don't know what really made me interested in it. I just got interested in serial killers. I guess it's the um, psychology about them that made me interested in them. Okay. Now, I did like a um, research project in college about Ted Bundy um, in my forensics class. It is interesting getting inside the mind of a serial killer, kind of what makes them tick, right? It's uh, mm -hmm. like, how do you go from a place of complete lack of empathy to, you know, like, how do you become, how are you still a human being and have a complete lack of empathy to where you're able to do this, these horrible things to people? Some research in psychology, have you been taking classes in psychology as well, or is this all like your own personal research on the side? No, it's just my own personal research. Wow. And you said you've been writing it since you were 14 years old? Yes. Awesome. And it's all finished, right? Yeah, it's done. I'm just um, trying to stick an agent. Okay, so have you been working on like query letters and that kind of thing? Yep. Have you uh, sent any out so far? Yeah, I sent a couple. I sent some like two years ago, which was a mistake. 
and I got a ton of rejections. And so I'm starting over with swearing. When you sent them, you said you sent them out as it was, it was a mistake two years ago. What was a mistake? You just weren't prepared? The book wasn't ready? or? Yeah, I was a bit impatient because I got too excited. So I thought, okay, I need to query now. And I shouldn't have done that because the um, my manuscript wasn't entirely prepared at the time. Yeah. It's 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 a hard thing to do though, right? Because especially when it comes from a place of like, I'm sure you think you know it's like great work. You feel like this is inspired good work. You just like want other people to read it. Have you had like beta readers and that kind of thing? Um, not yet. I was well, sort of. I had two of my teachers beta read it. Um, that wasn't as successful as I thought it would be because they they've never beta read a book before, so they don't know really what to do. They just said, "Oh, I like it." <laughs> hey well it's at least positive feedback right i mean I, I i make the worst beta reader as well because i'm just like this was great or this sucked i don't know <laughs> like what makes a great book necessarily you know it's kind of an intuitive process for a lot of people so you're you you finished all that up you're working on your query are you, do you have anybody helping you do your query letters or is this all like uh you know are you going about this the same way you went about the um, studying for the book and researching the book. Are you doing it all on your own? Uh, yes, I'm doing it all on my own. <laughs> so how are you, and you're also, when do you, when do you do the computer programming? Is this a side job? Um, yeah, pretty much. Um, I, it's, it's more of a hobby. It's not really a job. I don't really do this. I used to do it, um, as a job, sort of, when I was in middle school, like I'd code things for people, but I don't really do that anymore. Now I just do it for fun. Hmm. You know, they have like video games for coding now. Have you seen those? Yes, I have. Have you used any of them? Um, no, not really. No, because coding, like my brother is, is a coder as well, um, and he, he was self-taught. And it sounds like you're all self-taught on this. Yes. Is it is it similar to writing a book? Because I mean, you're writing code. You're basically teaching a computer to do something, right? Yeah, it is in a way. Except there's more screaming involved because it's frustrating. Did you say more screaming? <laughs> yes, there's more screaming involved because it gets really frustrating, especially when you're um, compiling your code and then there's an error, an error, and you're like, "What's the error?" And sometimes it's something as minor as forgetting a semicolon. Oh. Semicolons, man. <laughs> They're evil. Those things are the worst. <laughs> They're as bad as commas, in my opinion. I don't know when to. I don't know when to use them ever. Are you? <laughs> commas are the devil when writing, but then semicolons are the devil when programming. Ah. <laughs> so you have the same issue with commas when you're writing, like. You don't, I mean, because grammar seems like one of those things where it's like people make up their own rules. Yeah, it does seem that way. So have you had anybody else help you with editing or have you done all the editing yourself as well? I um, mean, yeah, I've also done that myself. Um, I bought a few grammar books to help me out with that. Have you read um, um, Elements of Style? Um, no, I haven't. No, that's a good one. Um, when it comes to using grammar to help with flow of and that kind of thing. Um, so you're working on the query letters. Do you have like a goal date in mind you want to have the book out by or would you that you would like to have it out by? Um, I'd like to have it out before I graduate. That's just my goal, but I don't know if that's possible. When do you, uh, when do you graduate? Um, in June. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd be a hell. Of, that'd be a hell of a graduation gift, right? If you had your book yeah. published, and that'd be that'd so be cool. Awful. Yeah, it would. So, are you planning on uh, going off to college, or? Uh, yes, I am. Are you already accepted somewhere? Yeah. Where are you going? Do you mind telling where you're going? Um, Cogswell Polytechnical College. So, are you going for programming? Yeah, computer science. Oh, very cool. You're you're a smart one. I can tell. <laughs> Am I really? <laughs> well, to, okay, so it's interesting what you're doing because um, I feel like the 
and I'm not saying there's not creativity in writing um, code or anything because I feel like there's a lot of creativity there, but it's more of a technical aspect, um, more obviously more numbers based, um, to where writing is obviously more of a creative uh, avenue for for literature, and it's not it's like this two halves of the brain, right? You're able to it's like you're using both halves. <laughs> when I just use like a quarter of mine, and <laughs> I get some I get some stuff done, but it's it. I mean, it's it's impressive that you're able to do both. And I'm assuming at a high level. I haven't read the book or anything. It's not out, but I'm assuming that it's pretty good. I mean, your teacher said they liked it. <laughs> well, then again, they're my teachers, so they're probably just saying that to flatter me. Um, I don't know who, what kind of teachers you have, but my teachers called me stupid all the time, and <laughs> they, just, they never sugarcoated anything. <laughs> they were like, "You're an idiot, man." <laughs> Well, thankfully, my teachers aren't like that. They're pretty kind. That's nice. It's nice. <laughs> if only. Well, that's cool. Um, so, you, are you working on another, any other writing besides besides the book, or is that your sole focus right now? Um, I have. I sometimes write short stories, and then I also have other um, work in progresses. But for now, I'm just working on um, that, getting that novel published. Just for now. I'm ignoring everything else at the moment. Yeah, I mean, you got a lot going on. School is, are you getting the senioritis where you don't feel like doing any schoolwork? Yes, and it's bothering me a lot. I mean, I need to start getting my stuff done. <laughs> yeah, what are you slacking on? Are there classes you're just not going to anymore? Have you been, are you, I know you're not, you're not skipping now. Uh, no, I don't skip. <laughs> don't skip classes. Okay, good. That'd be bad. I wouldn't, I don't, I don't, uh, approve of that <laughs> no i don't i'm too much of a coward to actually skip classes and if i don't go to a class i'll ask a teacher for permission and they'll usually have to approve before i do that otherwise i won't do it at all because like i said i'm a coward well i don't think you're a coward i mean anybody who writes and, and puts himself out there in that medium has some guts you know because if if I think writing is a very personal thing. I mean, you're obviously writing about something that either terrifies you or excites you, you know, and to share that with the world is, that's a bold thing, you know, because a lot of people just walk through life kind of hiding what they're interested in, you know, to please other people and to walk your own path and to do what you want to do. That's that's inspiring to people, you know. I mean, there's not a lot of people who, who are willing to do that. It's more mainstream to go along with what everybody else is doing. You know, but uh, and the, and the fact that you know you want to be a writer, um, and you've and you're obviously going to school to be a programmer. Like, I mean, is is writing something you want to do full time? Is that like your end goal when you, as you get older? Um, no, what I'm planning to do is um, I want to work as a programmer in the future, but I want to do writing on the side. I don't want to give okay. up either of them. So, which one do you love more? <laughs> oh, that is a hard one. Um, I'm going to have to say writing because I got into writing since I was nine years old, but then programming, I got into that when I was 11, so probably writing. So why wouldn't you want to do writing full time and programming on the side? Um, good question. Thank you. That's, that's why I do the interviews, because <laughs> I have so many good questions. You are a really good interviewer. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm just winging it. I'm winging it all the time. <laughs> I used to be um, the host of this one interview news show when I was a freshman, and I was terrible at it. I even really? had a class to help me out, but it was still a disaster. You did it for the high school? Um, it wasn't for my high school. It was just it was a community um, TV show kind of thing. That's so, so I just cool. yeah, I just interviewed random people who accomplished something. But it was Heck a disaster. Yeah. It was a disaster. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. I was only 14. Yeah, but you seem like a, a go-getter. Like, you you're, you aspire to do things, which is important. Like, a lot of people get it confused that you can only go do things that you're going to succeed at. That's complete bullcrap. Like, you got to go do things that you're, you probably are going to fail at because you don't know if you're going to love it or not. Like, I didn't know if I was going to love this or not. I've never done it before. I didn't know if, if I was going to love writing because I hadn't really sat down and done it before. But I realized that 
if I had never did it, that I wouldn't know. And once I started doing it, it was like, oh my God, I love this. And I, I can't see myself doing anything else. And I think that's a, that's a issue a lot of people struggle with in their, their entire life is never taking that chance to just do something. Mm, I agree. So does it feel like you have two, your, the two halves of your brain is, are fighting against each other for space to write and code? Um, sometimes, because since I'm also a busy high school student, I don't really have much time to spare. So yeah. sometimes I have to give up writing just to do my writing done. Which one would you say you're better at? You, we already know you love writing more, and uh, <laughs> don't worry, I won't tell the I won't tell the coding and the programming. I won't let them know. Which one are you? Do you think you're better at? Maybe I'm better at writing because programming, there's just so much to it. There's so many programming languages and a lot to learn. And I don't think I've mastered everything about it yet. So is it, does it mostly involve like building websites and uh, like what all does your programming entail? Oh no, it's not just all about building websites, that's web development. And I actually really don't like web development. It's just <laughs> really boring to me. Yeah. And what I like to do is Sometimes I'll make games or build random applications. Um, the first thing I created was a um, writing prompt generator, and I had a lot of fun with that. Oh, cool. I have a writing prop, prompt app on my phone. You made something like that where it just, it'll just it'll generate a random idea? Yeah, I'll, I'll click generate, and then it pops up a random writing prompt on the screen. How do you do that? Like, are you putting in a series of words? Do you just upload or create a algorithm that puts in a ton of words and then it just like mashes them together? How does that work? Oh, I, I wasn't too advanced at the time. I was 12 years old when I made it. Um, I just wrote my own. Yeah, I, I just wrote my own um, writing prompts, and then because I I didn't know which one to do first, and that was my problem. So I just wrote all of them, and mm -hmm. that generator decides which one I should write. That's incredible. I'm 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 amazed by you, Michelle. You're like a you're like a real life genius. It, uh, I mean, you're doing stuff that most adults wouldn't be you know wouldn't be able to do, which is it's just, and you're going to school doing it. Um, it's inspiring to see, you know. So congratulations to you on that. Um, I'm interested in the programming side too, though, because it's always been it's always been a fascinating thing for me because. I have this I have this idea that what we're doing right now as a human species, um, and with AI coming al along, um, you know, moving ever closer, that we're already kind of uploading ourselves and our consciousness into um, the cloud or whatever, into the, the stratosphere of um, technology, and to a point where once AI does is able to take over and like create artificial intelligence and robots and that kind of thing, that our our consciousness will already be um, set so that, like, if we wanted to, we could become immortal. We could, like, put ourselves into robots. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> I actually think that's a scary thought. I mean, are we still human if we do that? Mate, I mean... That's it. Are we like what makes us human now, right? What you have to ask yourself, like, what makes you as a human being? What makes you human? What would you say? Um, it is? Well, for one, not having a robot body, not being able <laughs> to transfer your conscience from one body to the next. Uh huh. I'd say that makes us pretty human. Do you, so you don't like the idea that that would be possible or could be possible in the future? No, I'm not a big fan of that. But I mean, who wants to be immortal? I don't know anybody off the top of my head. Uh, but what what if the robot you were put into was a kung fu robot? Those are cool. Okay, yeah, that'd be pretty awesome. And you could be kung fu and all over the place. <laughs> I mean, like, obviously, you don't want to be like a come back as a microwave or a toaster, but if you can come back as some sort of amazing kung fu robot, that'd be fantastic. You know, and I just I, I don't know. It's 
it's something I, I feel like we're moving closer towards. So you don't you don't do any kind of programming for artificial intelligence. I mean, I, I suppose the um, prompt thing was a form of artificial intelligence, though. Um, sort of. I did create something when I was, I think, thirteen, um, where the user can chat with um, the program, but that wasn't very interesting either, because it followed a script. Because, like I said, I wasn't really advanced at the time. Yeah. So I'd like to do more artificial intelligence stuff in the future. It's cool, right? Yeah, it is. It's really interesting. It's I don't even I don't understand how it works. I mean, it basically works like a human brain will work, right? And I don't know how that works either. <laughs> it can be pretty scary though, because what if it and what if it's so intelligent that it ends up programming itself? I know. That's what I hope. Yeah. I had a, I had a vision of myself in the future. John, it was like it was like you know you've seen Terminator and Terminator Two and stuff, right? Yeah, so like John Connor, like I imagine myself as John Connor in the future. I don't know why, but I have <laughs> I've got high hopes for myself and humanity. Mm. But I also think that as a human species, we're evolving. You know, like it's not necessarily even even to say like evolving to the technology side and, and AI. I think that's one aspect of it, but I think we're evolving in our own consciousness. Like we're seeing that we're, we're, we've we've spent so much time putting putting worth in things around us, in the appearance of things, in the physical nature of things, that we're starting to come back to a point where we realize that there's so much inside of us that we've lost. You know that we we haven't given credence to that we're now rediscovering, and that only like an awakening of the human spirit. That's an interesting point of view. <laughs> I agree. Okay, so what would you say? What kind of what books inspired you to be a writer? What what made you say, "Hey, I want to I want to give this a shot"? Um, it wasn't just books. It was actually um my uh, fourth grade teacher, because I was because mm -hmm. at the time I was in a four or five combo class. And so um, the teacher was making the fifth graders do a writing project um, around Halloween time, and she wanted us fourth graders to do it too. So we ended up doing that, and I wrote a um, a horror sh story called um, Don't Touch What's Not Yours, and I had a lot of fun with it, and that's when I got interested in writing. So what was it about? Do you remember the... Um, it was about three fourth grade girls who went camping and they find they find this stone and it's this really interesting and beautiful stone and so they take it to their campsite and then weird things start happening so they go out to find firewood and then uh -huh. um one of the girls go missing and so when they come back because before they left there's three small rocks by their campsite and when they come back after the first girl goes missing there's only two rocks there left and so they go back to look for her, and then the other girl goes missing. And then the remaining girl, she goes back to the campsite. There's only one rock left. And then she hides in her tent with the um, really pretty stone. And then uh -huh. this creature comes in into the tent, and he says he wants his stone back. And then that's how it ends. Ooh. By the way, the last girl dies. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, she's murdered. Who... <laughs> What was the what was the creature? Do you ever give name to the creature or like describe it? No, I just described it as a scary, ugly creature. Do you when you look back on what you wrote in fourth grade? That sounds like a really cool story, by the way. Um, and I've I've got three books from when I was in elementary school that the like elementary school paid to have like published and stuff like that. And I went back and looked at it, and I was like, this is the worst stuff ever. <laughs> I was like, what was I thinking? <laughs> Do you, when you look back at your writing at that time, are you impressed or are you like disgusted? I'm absolutely disgusted. I mean, the <laughs> idea was interesting, but just the writing was terrible. Yeah. And plus, there was a lot of cliches, like for one, camping, I mean, and the forest, that's a pretty big cliche. <laughs> yeah, but it's, you know. You have to give yourself some credit. I mean, you were in fourth grade. And also, do you do you look at it too and say, I mean, that was fourth grade and the improvement you've made since then 
Are you amazed by that that improvement? Yeah, it's like um, it's not even the same person writing these things. Yeah. You know, I'm just impressed by how much I've improved over time. Yeah, it is amazing, right? Like we actually we don't we don't give ourselves enough credit, I think, in the moment that we're in. Like as as writers and creators, people artistic people, I think we uh, tend to be really harsh on what we do, but if we take the perspective of, look what I was doing like 15 years ago, five years ago, five days ago, like have I made improvement? And I think for the majority of us, we can say yes. Um, and that's something to, to hold on to, right? Because as a writer, as a, any kind of creative person, we're always in a process of growth. Yes, always improving. Always improving. Is that one of the things you try to hold on to? Like, is that do you have a do you have a goal in mind? Like, um, you want to be at this level of um, financial or, or like fame acclaim at this time in your life? Do you have a certain um, number of goals you want to reach at a certain point in your life? Um, for now, the only goal I want is for people to actually enjoy reading my book. That's just my goal for now. I don't really care about fame as long as there are just at least a few people who actually enjoy it. Yeah. Well, who are um, who are some of the people you look up to now? Like writers? Well, besides me, of course. Who are some of the other people <laughs> that you <laughs> you are inspired by and that you look up to? Other Writ than you? Writers or anybody, really. I mean, it doesn't have to be just writers, but anybody who inspires you to do what you do. Probably Stephen King. I don't know. Ever since I was young, I've always looked up to Stephen King, and I've always wanted to be just like him. Yeah. He's the master of terror. Yes, he is. I'm sure you've read his book on writing. Yeah, I have. That is like... And every I feel like everybody I've talked to has read it. It's one of the best books I've read in a long time. And um, I didn't even... I'll tell you this, too, because I read it maybe six months ago i didn't even like stephen king um because i'm not a, <laughs> don't, don't don't hit me <laughs> don't don't throw okay. your phone on the ground okay i see <laughs> you very differently now hear me out wait no hear me out. hold on a sec hold on a sec the only reason was because i am a huge scaredy cat and when it comes to reading anything or watching anything that's scary i i can't do it like my baby brain is <laughs> like when I when I was four or five years old, my older brother made me watch Freddy Krueger with him, and from that point on, I was I was scarred. Like I stopped eating bologna sandwiches for some reason, and <laughs> like I was just terrified of anything scary. And like so, books, any kind of scary books, it was just not happening for me. So Stephen King was always that. Well, he's the guy who writes scary stuff. I'm not reading any of any of his any of his work. And then I read The Dark Tower, and I love that. And then I read um, On Writing, and I was like, I love Stephen King. This guy is amazing. Like, he, he's just like me. <laughs> he's funny. He's, like, relatable. And he, he writes about things that interest him, you know, more than anything else, which is really cool. So are we, are we cool again? Are we cool? Okay, yes, now we're cool. <laughs> <laughs> virtual handshake <laughs> virtual handshake good Whew. i was worried for a second so okay so besides stephen king are there any other any others you can think of that inspire you to do what you do are there okay so the, I, we don't ever really talk about this but in the programming world like who because there there's massively talented people in the programming world but they're never highlighted at all like you don't ever see the, you know, I don't even know who who created Google. Those guys are billionaires, but like, who the heck are they? Are there people you look up to in the programming world? Um, probably Linus Torvald. Do you okay. know who that is? No, I love. I know the name Linus though. It's like Charlie Brown. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> do you know what um, Linux is? Linux, yeah, it's the operating system for Apple, isn't it? Apple. No, it's it's a separate um, operating system. There's like I, th I thought okay. they were based on Apple though. 
or I mean, Apple based their operating system off of Linux. Is that wrong? Yeah, I, I think they did. But I mean, Linux isn't based on Apple or anything. It's its own operating system, kind of like okay. how Windows is their own operating system and um, Mac OS is its own operating system. Linux OS is its own, is its own operating system. Okay, and so gotcha. Linus um, created Linux, so I really look up to him. And Linux, Linux is pretty groundbreaking too, right? Because I think what I was, uh, what I, what I was saying was uh, Apple based their operating system off of Linux because it doesn't get viruses. Like you can't. There's like I don't know. I don't know how he did it, right? But there's, it, it's like a very secure operating system. Like Microsoft is, is uh, I'm using Microsoft, so you guys are great. Don't. <laughs> but but Linux is like a very sturdy. Uh, operating system, right? Have you ever used Linux before? Not, no, no, no. I've I've only used like Mac and uh, and Windows, so never never pure Linux. As soon as I get a new laptop, the first thing I do every time is I'll dual boot to um, a Linux, and usually I'll use um, what's it called uh, Kaboon Two because that's my favorite. What is it? Boon two? Kaboon two? Kaboon two. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. I've heard of that. It's um it's a distribution of Linux. Does it cost money? No, it's free, hundred percent. I you gotta help me out here, cause <laughs> I like the one thing that worries me about the computer thing is like Microsoft or the operating system for Microsoft is good for like two years. It doesn't matter what you do on the computer. It gets bogged down extremely quickly. The operating system starts failing and it starts glitching and you have like I, I've had this computer for less than six months and it restart. It's already been like restarting like and I'm worried that oh no, I'm gonna lose my computer. But with like Mac, I never had that issue. And with Linux, I think it's the same way. It's just a, a much sturdier operating system. How do you go about booting your computer to up uploading a new operating system? Um, <laughs> Can you, you give me boot, detailed instructions? <laughs> sure. Um, first of all, you need to download the ISO file of any Linux distribution you want, and then you have to place that into a um, bootable drive, like a flash drive or a CD or something like that. Then you put that in, and then um, you restart the computer, and then you go to the, um, I, I don't know what it's pronounced, but the BIOS, you have okay. to boot into that. And so you, um, there'll be two options. Um, you can boot into um, Windows, or you can boot into that um, Linux distribution, and then you choose that Linux distribution, and then you just go from there. And then it basically, you just upload the apps or whatever that you yeah. need. And the easiest way to use Linux is to use um, a virtual machine. You know what a virtual machine is? It's this computer, right? This is virtual. <laughs> like, no, I, I don't you, basically, you can use Linux inside of um, Windows. So, like, um, you so download I, a virtual I machine. I wouldn't have to get rid of Windows. I could literally just open up Linux in Windows. Yeah. Also, when you dual boot, you don't have to get rid of um, Windows unless you delete the partition. Um, you can use both when you dual boot. It's like two computers inside one with dual booting. That sounds way too. I, would that wouldn't that bog down the computer though? Like, no, it make... doesn't. Um, oh. That's the problem with a virtual machine because you're using. Um, it, it just. It really slows down when you use a virtual machine, but with um, dual booting, it doesn't really do that. Huh. Okay, I'm gonna need some. I'm gonna need further instruction on this uh, later on, <laughs> for real, because that's something that I would like to do. Um, I do want to ask you another question, though. Michelle Midnight. Where did Where did you come up with the name Michelle Midnight? Um, I mean, just... Michelle's your real name. I know that, but. The midnight part. Where did that come from? It's because I wanted to use a pen name because I wanted to separate my writing life from my personal life, 
and I wanted I wanted a name that also had two M's and had eight letters because Michelle has eight letters and it starts with an M and Midnight has eight letters and it starts with an M. And also I really love Nighttime, so I chose Michelle Midnight because of that. That's interesting. Is is the only significance to the eight letters is that Mich Michelle has eight letters as well? Is there other significance to eight? Um, no, it's just because Michelle has eight letters. Okay. But that's not the main reason why I chose Midnight. It's just because I love nighttime. Yeah, I guess it's a great time of day. <laughs> so, what do you what do you do? You're obviously working a lot and doing a lot of different projects. What do you do for fun? Fun. Um, I'll roller skate. Yeah. I'll chase my, yeah. I'll chase my sister. Um, like she'll ride her bike and I'll ride my roller skates and then I'll chase her around. Like roller skates, not roller blades. Yeah, roller blades. I just roller didn't know that you knew the difference because some people don't know the difference. Yeah. I used to I used to inline skate when I was younger. I had some K twos. I would uh, drop in on the pipe and whatnot and <laughs> totally destroy myself because I was like, I was I was a. Uh, I guess like 11 to 15, I was like 300 pounds and five foot six. <laughs> just this big ball of cheese rolling around on some roller blades. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty hilarious every time I fell on the. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's a good time. So you get to rollerblade a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I miss doing it. And uh, you just have one sister or? Yeah, I have a sister and a brother. Oh, cool. That sounds like a lot of fun. Sure, keeping you busy. Um, are you the oldest of the group? Yes, I am. Yeah, you got to take care of them a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You're even my brother, even though he's like 15, but he's very, very ir irresponsible. Well, as a as a man myself, uh, as a grown up boy, I would say more likely uh, we are very irresponsible. Um, but the trick is because I grew up around all women. Um, don't cut him any slack. He can do it. His hands were his hands weren't put on backwards, and make him work. It's the only way we. That's the only way we learn. <laughs> it's the only way we that's learn. That's actually very useful advice because I baby him a lot and I do a lot of stuff for him. Yeah, I mean, it's I don't know what it is. It's it's the nurturing side, like my. My mom always wanted to baby me and stuff like that, but my sisters were hard as heck on me, and like, it's good. They, because I needed that. I didn't. I don't need to be babied all the time. It's it's not it's not great for our development. We need, but football also did that for me. Um, so yeah, don't, he'll he'll thank you later. I promise. If you're if you give him a little bit of, of tough love and make him do some work. I mean, sometimes I do that, but then I feel guilty. So. No, it's because you love them, right? Um, I guess. Ah, <laughs> you don't want you don't want to say. <laughs> oh, I love that. It's so embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> awesome, Michelle. I I, I want to thank you again so much for coming on the Uniweb interview show and joining me. Um, you seem like you have an incredible future ahead of you. I would really look forward to reading your book, and um. And also interacting with the AI robots that you produce in the future. I hope, I hope that one day I can upload my consciousness into something you've created, like a kung fu robot, hopefully, and I can become an immortal kung fu robot. Hopefully that happens. Thank will you. you. Please, will you? Will you get to work on that, please? <laughs> I know you're not that busy. <laughs> will you please get started? I'm gonna keep that on my list of projects to work on. Thank you. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> I'd just be, I'd just be running around giggling and kicking stuff. It'd be, it'd be so fun. Um, the so you you said, I just want to one more thing before we finish up here. You said you did have some short stories. Is there anything you want me to link in the description of this video um, that people can read or check out some of your stuff? Um, not really. Um, maybe just my. Tumblr and my Twitter because sometimes I'll post my short stories and my poems on Tumblr. Okay, yeah, we can we can definitely put your uh, Twitter and and Tumblr in there. 
Um, is there anything you want to tell the writing community before before we go? Are you looking for? Because I'm telling you right now, the writing community has been fantastic for me. I had I was doing everything on my own before that. <clears throat> Are you looking for help writing query letters, editing, or anything like that? That I mean, is that something you're interested in? Because I know there's a ton of people out there that are interested in helping. Not really. The only help that I need, I guess, is seeking an agent. That's pretty much it. Agents. Agents out there, check out Michelle Midnight. She's going places. You better jump on board quick. Michelle, thank you so much again for joining me. If there's anything I can do for you in the future, uh, please let me know. Um, I'm going to be hitting you up to get my computer fixed. <laughs> for sure <laughs> but uh stay in touch okay and good luck with school okay thank you so much um for the offer and for having me on um uni web productions you're welcome UniWeb, it's where all people become one people tell your friends <laughs> I certainly will all right thanks michelle as soon as I get to class, I'm gonna tell my classmates about your um youtube show yeah, tell them it's ridiculous. It is. Uh, did you? <laughs> They're going to okay. have a good laugh I'm, about it. Hold on, I'm going to stop recording. Bye. Say bye. Bye. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you would, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification for the bell. You know what? We love you. Love you. Love you. You know what?